The most important component of your software implementation contract package and the most important agreement that you're going to negotiate is going to be your statement of work. My name is Marcus Harris. I'm a software and technology attorney. For the last 20 years, I've drafted and negotiated a variety of technology-related agreements, and I've litigated failed software implementations and digital transformations in courts across the country. We always say that digital transformations don't fail because of technology-related issues. They fail because of people issues, and I think there's a lot of truth to that. And because that is a general tenant associated with these types of transactions, one of the most important agreements that comes to the forefront in the negotiation process is really the master services agreement, the professional services agreement, they're called different things, and certainly the statement of work that's going to be attached to those types of contracts. You know, the statement of work really is a project-focused document. It's not necessarily a legal document, though there certainly are legal components associated with a statement of work. It's really the document that level sets how the project is going to go. And on that document, you have to ensure that you manage the implementation project, or at least the phase of that implementation project that the SOW relates to, with a high degree of care and a high degree of specificity. And what this means is that you need to include specific milestones for certain phases of you know, whatever portion of that project or portion of the implementation in its entirety that, that SOW is dealing with. You want to include specific deliverable obligations that reference back to requirement documents associated with those deliverables. You want to have clearly defined obligations that are placed on the vendor. You have to be careful about the obligations that the vendor is trying to place on you as a customer. And you also need to ensure that you've got some sort of acceptance testing criteria within the body of that statement of work associated with whatever deliverables or products um, or services that are being provided to you. There's a variety of things that you need to include, but I think if you can focus on at least those, you're really going to set yourself up for success and to have you know, a dog in the fight in the event that that SOW or that project starts to go sideways, you can always point back to that SOW and ideally it will tell you know, both parties exactly what the obligations are, exactly what the deadlines are, and what the contractual obligations are with respect to that portion of the project. You know, well, I think all of that is incredibly important. There is you know, one fundamental flaw associated with statements of work and I think it really is that you know, the statement of work for all that we do to try to ensure that it is a project management type document, it really is a snapshot in time and what it is good at capturing is really you know, the party's expectations and intentions at the time that that statement of work was negotiated and signed. What it is not necessarily good at is, is you know, capturing those intentions and obligations as they evolve over time as the project itself evolves. So in some sense, I think, you know, while you know, we, we are typically touting an SOW as a critically important piece of the, the puzzle of that contract uh, package, and it is, you know, in some ways, and I think particularly today with the advance of you know, agile software development methodology or implementation methodologies, you know, the SOW can have uh, you know, some challenges, but you know, in order to counteract that, I think it's important for you to include a robust change management provision that doesn't just reference you know, or pay, play lip service to change management. I think what you need to do is actually reference you know, when the change man management process needs to be invoked. You also need to include you know, a change management type document that spells out exactly what needs to be incorporated into the change management uh, or the change order so that everybody knows not only what is, you know, outside of scope, what's in scope, what the costs are going to be, but you also want to know what the impact on the overall project is going to be. The project timeline, deliverable milestones, whatever it is, all of these things want, you need, you need to put them in there, again, with a high level of specificity. And I think it's also incumbent for you to think about documents that may exist outside of the statement of work. You want to make reference to the extent it's appropriate for your deal, you know, to project plans, um, project status updates. You know, if you can incorporate, you know, things that are a little bit more broad, uh, than just the statement of work in and of itself, I think you're then you know, really uh, setting yourself up, like I said, for success because you're going to have a document that you know, not only captures what the party's intentions are at the beginning of the project, at the time that document was executed and signed, 
but you know we're going to i think you're you're doing what you can to mitigate against you know changes um, and uh, modification to the project over time if you have any questions about you know the sow process uh, software implementation projects in general or the contract negotiation process associated with digital transformation feel free to reach out to us we're happy to talk to you and happy to uh, you know give you what the lay of the land is and point you in the right direction